All right, good morning, guys. How you doing? Uh, we are going to jump right into this. No need to mess around. We're going to get started, uh, knock this whole thing out. Again, good morning. Uh, I'm glad you guys are ready to go and get all of this started. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with you, Bob. We're going to start with the Siu Nin Tao. Uh, if I have to move up closer to show you the angle of my hands, I will, I'll do that, but uh, I just want to get started with you first, get you so that you have something to, you got your basis to work on. So we're going to start the seal nim towel, then we're going to move uh, into the seal nim towel uh, techniques for the seal nim towel. That's when the camera's going to get a little closer when I'm working on the dummy. Uh, that will be for John Randy. No, that will be for uh, Tim, LaShawn, and then Derek's. I'm going to show you exercises and techniques you can use with one hand, how to rotate the wrist and the arm, how to use everything with one arm so that you can give your other arm a break until it's good to go. Uh, lastly, oh, after them, I will go into more technique base, which all of you can use, all of you can study and look at. Look at. I'm going to go into more technique based, uh, more into Lotzal, into Tanda to Tanda to Kun to Kul Sao Kun to, and this is for everybody. I'm going to sinking, how to sink instead of leaning forward, how to sink into the stance and move forward and walk forward. I'm going to do that for everybody. But then the last thing is for James excuse me, which is, is going to be a lot more technique based, it's going to be a lot more kicks and deflections here with the hand, the hand with the kicks, how to make the shots, and how to destroy your opponent. Uh, these techniques are a little more advanced, so that's why those techniques will specifically be for James. Now, I'm going to do this twice a week. This will be your training for the month until we are back in class, until we can get back to some sense of normalcy. But uh, just know, this is what I'm doing. This is how we're gonna do it. And then I need your opinion on how this looks. I need your opinion on how this, how this looks, how this is going, because this may be how I do the online classes. I may do the online classes the exact same way, and get people started uh, on different techniques, how to sync, and so forth. I'm gonna get a mic uh, so that I don't have to yell. I can talk quieter so that I don't wake people in the house. But as far as today, uh, this is what we're doing. So let's get started. So Bob, for you, this is for you to train at home. You and Roscoe, all right? So feet together. You're always gonna take a deep breath. Blow everything out to relax the entire body. Because the muscle groups you're gonna use, you don't have to you, you don't have to tense up to use them. You're gonna use them naturally as you get into the different movements. So you also, after relax and taking a deep breath, you want to mentally tell yourself to drop all of your body weight. You just wanna say, you wanna Say to yourself, drop all your body weight to your feet. Drop all your body weight to your feet. You know it's working when your feet start to feel heavy because now your weight is pushing into the ground and that's how you want to establish your root, all right? You want to establish your root and that's very, very vital because if your root isn't established then when somebody hits you or pushes you, they can uproot you easily, right? So back to it. Pull the elbows back, just the elbows. And I'm gonna get deeper into this. There'll be sections, little clip, clip scenes, little scenes showing the elbows. So you wanna pull the elbows back, allowing the hands to relax. And once you get to here, once you get to here, I'm going to, there'll be another clip scene. Once you get to here, 
then you want to pull the forearms up and then close the fist very lightly, okay? You want your body to be in line straight across from knuckles across the chest. You want that in line and shoulders relaxed. From here, you want to push the knees together as you sink and sit. You don't want to go forward. You don't want to lean forward. You simply want to sit here, sit back straight, sit. Don't arch your back, keep your back straight and simply sit with the knees pressed together. From here, you want to push the toes up, pull the toes up so that you can get on your heels turn the heel the toes out on your heels i'll do it again rotate on the heels not on the arch on, on the toes on the heels rotate it out come up on the balls of each foot which is here once you come up on the balls of each foot you want to turn the heels out now you don't want your heels turned out so much that your knees are actually pressed in towards each other you want this to be a natural stance to where the knees are going in, in a triangle shape, but they're also going forward, which is where you want everything to go, is to go forward. From here, you want to, with your knees still bent, you want to press the thighs together. Because this is where your rotation is coming from. This is where your stability is coming from, is coming from your thighs. You don't want to stay in this position, Bob, because now you're pressing on your knees or anybody else. Guys, you don't want to stay here because now all the weight is pressing on your knees and you're going to damage your knees. So once you press the thighs, straighten the legs out so that now the weight lies on the thighs and this is where you want it to lie. Because if, you're, if your weight is on your thighs, your thigh muscles are starting to grow. They are starting to work. It's called isometrics. And, the, and, this, and this isolating the muscles here which means those muscles will start to get stronger, which will help in stance and also in kicking. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So from here, with the thighs pressed and your weight dropped to your feet, the next move you wanna do is you wanna open the hands up and relax them. This is the first way to teach yourselves how not to use your hands in everything. So your elbows and your forearms are what you're using, not your hands at this point. So open your hands and simply relax them. You should be able to shake them very easily. From here, push the elbow. Keep your hands relaxed, but straighten them so that they can slide past each other. Now, this is very, very important. And I'm going to show this in a clip. This is very important. So, as you push your elbows forward, you're looking for the edge of your thumb to line up with the center of your chest. This is what you want. Now you don't want your hands so close that when you push them forward, they're almost touching. You want your hands forward because everything you do, you want space in it. So that this, once you go from here to say a bong style position, you have the space you need. This is the, this is the space of a bong style. This is where you want it. So you rotate the wrist down and pop the wrist back up rotating the elbow down again rotate the wrist pop that pops the elbow up automatically you want this to be done by body mechanics and not necessarily by you you want it done by body mechanics so you rotate the wrist up which pulls the elbow back down this is the distance you want so <clears throat> from here we'll do it again open the hand up but relaxing shoulders down push your elbows forward and allow your hands to come out aligning the edge of your thumb with your center line right bob this is your center line there are eight points of center i'm going to go over that in another in another video there's eight points of center here's the first one point two here along the shoulder blade right along the joint in between the shoulder and your chest or your pectoral this is the other line. The next line is here along the side of your arms. The next one is right behind the shoulder, attaching to the shoulder blade. 
The, another one is directly down the center of the back. The shoulder blade on the opposite side. The shoulder along the shoulder here, which is splitting you directly in half. That's the eighth one is here. Again, between the shoulder and the pectoral here. So basically what I'm saying to you, Bob, is you have eight points of center and <clears throat> every center point is where you can cut the body in half and there's an equal amount on each side, all right? So remember that. With there being an equal amount <clears throat> on each side, now you, and you're, not, you're no longer punching from just one side of your body. If you're punching from the center, now you're punching with both sides of the body at the same time. So both your, equal, your entire body weight is equally coming forward into the attack, right? So we'll go back to here. So now from here again, open the hands up, pushing the shoulders down, very relaxed. Don't force them, but pushing them down, pushing the hands out and forward to where they cross at the thumbs. Now I'm in my center. I'm in my primary center. From here, I'm not going to rotate the arms down because that takes too long and then you may miss something that's coming in to attack you. You want to push straight down in front. So you're rotating the hands, you're tilting the hands to where your palms will be facing out. At that point, as you're tilting your palms to where the palm, you're turning your hands where your palms are pointing out, you're pushing your arm, your forearms straight down. So from here, as you rotate the palms, you're pushing the forearm straight forward and down. You want them to go in almost a 30 degree angle, straight down in front of you. As you're pushing them down and rotating your hands, you want to lock the elbows. Remember to lock the elbows. I know you got a thing about locking your elbows because you're not used to it, but you have to lock the elbows, right? From here, push, rotate the wrist, push down, lock the elbows. The elbows being locked will allow this bone to work as a deflection, as a deflective angle, and that's what you want. You want this deflective angle to be used in a different attack. Say if someone throws a hook punch to the stomach or a straight punch at you, you use this arm coming down, straight down, and it locks, so it runs into that incoming strike, deflecting it off. But you can, you'll also be doing damage to that person as you deflect this off. So, again, here, the palms up, here, directly across, pushing, rotating the wrist and pushing the arm straight down. Now, the palms should be facing the floor at this point and your elbows locked, but your elbows only lock for a split second. So the moment this is completed and the elbows are locked, you relax the elbows, pulling them out, allowing the wrist to rotate. Your thumb being bent throughout this whole, throughout this whole technique, the edge of your thumb should rest up under your wrist. So that now this gives you an idea of where your rotation point is at. Because you're gonna rotate these hands back up. All right? So again, one, two, and now open the elbows up. After locking the elbows, the thumbs are pointed down. The palms are pointed almost vertically away from you. They're almost pointed away from you forward. So that allows the thumbs to lock. Either which arm you have on top, it doesn't matter. This still allows the thumbs to lock. So once these are locked and the elbows are open, you rotate the bottom hand up along the forearm so that it comes back up. The bottom hand rotates under 
the arm under the top under the bottom arm the top hand rotates under the bottom arm under and back up to the starting position so if you start it here with this hand on the inside gate and this hand on the outside gate which means the gates mean the position in which your hands are. The closer to you it is is the inside gate. The further away it is from you is the outside gate. Anything on the outside of your arm is called the outside gate. Anything on the inside of your arm is called the inside gate. So, again, if once you rotate the wrist and push the forearms forward, locking the elbows, now the elbows relax, open up, palms turn slightly aiming towards the floor in front of you now you rotate this hand the bottom hand up on the inside of the gate and the bot top hand rotates along the outside of the gate back into the inside gate and now takes its place as you pull the elbows back down and a start go back to the starting position right from here pull the elbows back to here back to the starting position. Now, next movement comes with the kun, with the with the straight punch or the kun sao kun. So, this starts by pushing your elbow forward, the elbow should rotate down as your hand slides directly in front along your center line. Again, you're using your wrist here as the point of understanding where your center line is. Your wrist should always lie in your center. Not your knuckles but your wrist should lie in your center line because now as your wrist is aligned in your center once you straighten out this arm your knuckles will be in your center and that's what we're hitting with not with the tops of the fingers not with the base of the fingers we're punching with the knuckles and we're always punching with the lower three not with the top the lower three and the reason for that is that when you look at your hand the bottom three knuckles align directly with the bone from the wrist they line directly. So you want direct bone alignment all the time throughout this system. It should never be anything that's off. It should always be bone alignment. That way you're hitting with one solid piece and not two or three separate pieces. All right. So again, pushing the hand forward, align the wrist and your hand closes slightly. You want to aim the fist where it's going. You never want to just have it limp. You want to have it structured to where it's going, it's aimed where it's going, right? Everybody else, things will move a little faster because you all already know this, but we got to take this time with Bob and Roscoe. So from here, you want to push your elbow, but aim your hand exactly where it's going. So you're pushing the forearm forward by pushing the elbow. So as you push your elbow forward, your forearm is going to go forward and you're straightening out the arm. Now, once you push the arm forward, your fist should close as it travels. So as you're pushing your hand forward, imagine something running into your hand every time you get closer to the completion of this punch and now your fist is completely closed, right? So it's not closed from this point to here. It closes as it travels. And this is simply, this is simply to teach you how to, how to execute an explosive punch. And at the end of this, once the elbow locks, the hand relaxes, the hand opens up. And that's so that you can go into other techniques. You can punch and stop a strike. You can punch and go to another strike directly without having to punch and then think about opening your hand up to do something else. This becomes automatic. Right? So again, from here, from a center line, at least one fist length away from your chest. You always want to start a fist length away from your chest. I know it's going to be a little difficult to think about how you generate power, but the more comfortable you become with launching things from your elbow, the easier it will become to launch all of this from your elbow. So as we as you push as you line it up you line it up one fist length you can always check with your other fist here placing your other fist directly on your chest like this place this on top 
barely touching it, and then pull the hand back. And then you can practice this to know exactly where one fist length is from your chest. So again, you're pushing the elbow forward. As the hand closes, it comes directly up your center. You want to keep your body from turning because that's a natural thing. As this arm goes out, most people, their body wants to turn. You want to keep it tucked so that as this is going forward, you're still punching with both sides of your body. As you turn, you're only punching with one side and you're lessening the amount of body weight that comes behind the punch. So again, push the hand forward, allow it to close as it's traveling. Lock the elbow at the end of this. Don't let it snap down. Don't let it snap down. As you push forward, the arm will raise and the arm elbow will lock because your arm can't go any further. So the lock on its own because it can't actually go any further. So again, you don't want this. You don't want this to happen because you're trying to lock the elbow. You want to extend the arm as far as it goes. You want to extend the arm as far as it goes, allowing the elbow to lock, right? So again, push, lock. From here, you want to turn the palm up keeping the elbow somewhat locked, but you don't want to lock it completely. You want it almost locked, but slightly bent, just a small bend in it. Don't want it here, a small bend, because you're going to be using this. So from here, you want to pull the wrist back towards you, rotate it over, pulling the fingers back towards your chest. Once you get to this position, once it's at an angled position where the knuckles are pointing towards the floor and not towards the wall, ball your fist up because now you're building up the forearm muscle which is going to allow you to hit harder right remember that you're building this up so it hits harder so from here as you pull the fingers back towards you you ball the fist up and now you're rotating the wrist not the forearm but the wrist in a circle out which now your elbow is going to lift up very very important point on this. As you're pushing your fist forward, your elbow needs to be pointed down, not out, but down. This is the natural way your arm position is. Your arms don't, we don't walk like this. We don't walk like this. So you don't want your elbows pointing out. You always want your elbows pointing back when your arm is in this position. But when you lift your arm up to punch, you always want your elbow pointing down so that this is the natural bone alignment that your body has. So again, as you punch, keep your elbow pointed down and your wrist in your center, keeping your body forward. It's going to feel awkward, strange, going to feel a little tight. But there's a reason for that. So push your hand forward, locking the elbow. Push your forearm, not your hand. Push your forearm forward until the arm locks automatically because it can't go any further. Turn the palm up, which is called a, this is called an upper tonsil. Pull the hand back, which now you are performing what is called a, a honsal, which is a rotating wrist. So from the tonsil, pull the fingers back towards you, rotate the wrist around, counterclockwise, right? Not clockwise because you can't do that, counterclockwise, with your wrist in the center. Ball the fist up to activate your forearm muscles, rotate it out, keeping, it, keeping your fist closed. This can't tighten it and close it, but keep it closed. From here, you rotate the wrist out, back to center. Now your bones, your three knuckles are aligned with your forearm. From here, drop the elbow and pull the wrist back so that it aligns back again along directly up under your chest plate. Because between from this center line here up under your chest plate, this is where your solar plex lies. Your solar plex connects every nerve in your body at this center point. If this is hit effectively, your body is shut down. You're going to the ground. So this is something you're protecting, as well as you're protecting your lower intestines 
which all line the center. You're protecting your nose, your nasal cavity. You're protecting your mouth. You're protecting the, the, your teeth. All of this is protected in the center as well as along the base of your jaw. Bottom base of your jaw is where a lot of the nerves to your brain lie. This is why when people get hit in their jaw, they get knocked out. Not here, but here. So you're protecting all of this by learning to keep everything in your center. So again, from here, from the tongue, the home side back, rotating around, back, and then drop the elbow and pull it back. And you're simply going to repeat this on the other side. So not going to get into that. You're going to repeat it on the other side. Uh, eventually, I will go through recording the entire seal and towel for everybody so they can use it. Uh, James, I'm going to record the chunk you for you uh, if, later on. So from here, from this point, once you pull the other arm back, now you're going to use your tonsil. And, well, Bob, this is where I want you to stop. First section. This is where I want Bob to stop is at the first section of the seal nymph tile. I want you to learn those because you're going to learn how to use chain punches to deflect incoming strikes. But I also want you to watch everything else so that you can understand how to use a poxile and a tonsile. All right? I want you to understand how to use these. All right? So... Watch the video, but Bob, this is for you. This is where this stops for you. I'm gonna go through chain punches at the end of this so that you can see what you're doing. So for LaShawn and T, this is for you. From this point, you're now in the second section of the, of the seal nymph tile, you're in part two. So I'm gonna open the palms up with the thumb, pull back, pushing the elbow forward. Once your fingertips once your fingertips align with your center, now you're going to start rotating the wrist. You're pushing the elbow in towards your center. So you're pushing that elbow in along your side. You're not pressing here. You're not allowing just pushing it forward. You're pressing it along your rib cage into your center so that, so that as you push this forward, the elbow comes in and you pop, you turn the wrist over. You don't simply want to bring the hand up. You want to pop the wrist over. The reason for that is that now your palm is securely facing upward and anything coming in, the angle of your thumb is going to deflect it off. So you want that pop at the very end. So it's from here, open the palm up. So from here, open the palm up, tuck the thumb, not all the way in, but almost like a, like, a, like a scythe for a weapon. But the fingers need to be relaxed, but fully open. So from here, as you push forward towards your center, once your fingers reach your center, you're gonna start rotating the mouth, pushing the elbow in until your elbow is in. Now, your elbow does not tuck all the way in, it starts to move forward. Once it reaches, once it's past your rib cage, once it taps right at the beginning of your rib cage, and you know where your rib cage begins because you can press right here to feel it. Once this happens now, you're turning the wrist over to pop it and you're pushing the forearm forward, right? You want at least a fist length away from your rib cage here at this point, but forward and the palm going out, the fingers pointing away from your shoulder. And your fingers should be aligned just past your own shoulder so that when the strike comes in, someone throws a strike in, you pop it out, it goes away from your shoulder. Now the strike is away from you, all right? Very important point. Tonsiles are only to be used for close range hook punches or close range punches. If you're already engaged in a fight and they throw it very quickly, that's when you want to pop that out and shift off, but we'll go into shifting in another class. <clears throat> and we're going to shifting at the end of this. So I need to speed this up. So again, from here, tonsil forward, pressing the thighs, sitting, everything else relaxed, and 
LaShawn, you need to push this weight forward. You need to push these arms forward so that your weight comes behind you, all right? I understand you're thin, but that's no excuse. You still have body mass and weight you have to start using, so you have to push these arms forward. So, again, once the fingers reach the center, you wanna push forward, tweaking the wrist as it starts to come up. Now, from here, pull your forearm over into the center where your wrist is now in the center and now from here pull your wrist back creating a hook sow creating a home sow but you're pulling your wrist back as you pull the wrist back you want to drop the forearm at least two inches why are you dropping it from anywhere from an inch to two inches because as the strike that you're having is coming someone's having a strike come in as you hit here you need to pull the arm down not with your hand but with your forearm not with your hand but with your forearm so that now you're on top so that as you rotate out you can go inside right so again from here pull it over rotate it back drop it down with the forearm and the elbow pull the forearm and the elbow down rotating out pushing the palm out because again you're pushing that arm out all right so that you can come in for the strike under the arm while the arm is still on the out outside gate of your arm so you push you rotate this out but to get back to our man style position which is the primary fight position you want to rotate this wrist up pressing the fingers in as you push the arm towards the center again and now push the arm forward you want, again, your wrist in your center. Guys, it is vital. Have your wrist in your center, not your hand. Your wrist. So as your wrist comes forward, it should be slightly bent to make a triangle. Remember, triangles are the primary shape in Wing Chun. There has to be a triangle in virtually everything you do. So you want this, tri this slight triangle shape from your wrist to your shoulder, down to your elbow, to the bend in your elbow back. So from here, from the mansal position, which is your primary line of defense, or your primary line of protection, get out of that word defense, your primary line of protection, you pull the elbow back, rotating, rotating the wrist up, pulling the elbow back. Not the hand, pulling the elbow back until your bicep touches your pec. Once that's done, you stop. Here's your position, one fist length away from the chest, this is where you stop. A little over a fist length, so that it still gives you room to launch an attack, but you're safe here. From here, you wanna drop the, drop the wrist, very relaxed, and pull the fingers back towards, your, back towards your chest, keeping your wrist in the center, which is now the foot side. So with your foot sow, this is the part of the our hand, you're, this is the part you're, you're striking with is the back of the palm. So you're gonna push your, el your wrist, your, your elbow in towards your center until again, you're one fist length away, your elbow is one fist length away or one inch away from your, from your rib cage. Keeping your elbow tucked and your wrist in the center. Again, from here, drop, rotate out, all the way in, pushing the fingers back in as you push the hand forward, all right? You're gonna do it again, go through it, pulling it back, rotating the wrist up, pull the hand back, drop, pull the fingers back towards you, pushing the elbow in and out. Now, from here, you're gonna, from here, you're gonna press down, rotate around, out, and back up. At this point, you should be feeling this in your shoulder, but this is building up power in your shoulders. Every muscle that you're using now, you're building a power so that you can generate more energy. So again, from here, you're gonna pull the wrist, rotate the wrist up so that the fingers are pointing up and pull the elbow back, stopping one fist length or an inch and a half from your chest. Now from here, you're going 30 degree angle. So you're gonna push the elbow, not the wrist, but the elbow across, keeping the elbow bent and keeping your hand even with your shoulder, right? Pushing it across. From here, this is the pox out. 
and you're pushing across so that you can knock anything coming in, the, def or the direct punch coming in, you knock, you pock it out of the way, deflecting it out of the way. You don't want to go across your chest because that keeps the person too close to you. You don't want to push <clears throat> it all the way out because now you're pushing them too far away from you. You simply want their hand out of the direct line of fire for you. So again, from here, you push the elbow across, pocking. Now from here, you pull the palm back towards the, towards the center of the chest, and this is going to be a straight palm strike. So <clears throat> basically, it looks like this. If this punch was coming in straight towards me, I would pock it out of the way here so that I could strike over the top because you always want to go behind your own hand. Remember, as you're crossing your own hand, remember guys, this is the bridge. You always want to create a bridge and anytime you touch another person or touch an object, doesn't matter what it is, you just created a bridge. You want to cross that bridge behind your hand. You don't want to punch here and then try and punch in front of your hand because you just defeated the purpose of knocking this arm out of the way. So if you pop this arm out of the way, you want to come behind the bridge. Again, punching from your center, right? So the purpose of this is to pop the arm out of the way because you're training each side of the body now in the very beginning. You're training each side so that as you get into the second section, third section, and the first section of the chunky you, you're now using both hands. You're very comfortable with both hands because you taught both sides what to do, all right? This is the purpose for training one side at a time in the beginning of the, in the beginning of the seal and towel is so that you become comfortable doing this on both sides so that when it comes to using both hands, this does not become uncomfortable. This isn't uncomfortable. It's not something that you're unused to, that you're not used to, all right? This becomes very easy because now both sides are very equipped with using the different techniques that you're already become comfortable with, all right? So just to explain it again. So again, pock even with your shoulder, at least one, two, three fifths lengths away from your away from your body. So we're looking at about two, four, maybe six inches away from your chest. All right. Even with your shoulder, pull the elbow back in, pulling the forearm back towards your chest. So you're pulling the elbow back in the forearm back straight towards your chest. So from here, you're going to push the palm forward directly into a palm strike. So again, you're going one, two, one, two. So again, cross from the elbow, pull back towards the center of the chest. Now from here, push forward, locking the elbow. Now you can see past your hand, but it's harder for your opponent to see you because you just hit them in the jaw or in the face. So now to again, to restart to the next section or to the other side, go back into the tonsil position with the wrist in the center, hun backwards, with the fingers pointed towards you, rotate around, fingers pointed back towards you, rotate around, balling the fist up 